Hello and welcome to another edition of Stormy Weather, news from the front line in the end times. This week I'll be interviewing Adam Go Rightly, author of James Shelby Downard's Mystical War, also of The Shadow Over Santa Susanna, Black Magic and Mind Control, and the Manson Family Mythos, and the prankster and the conspiracy, the story of Jerry Thornley and how he met Oswald and inspired the counterculture, and also Adam Go Rightly on Death Cults. Adam's website is adamgorightly.com. Hey, Adam, finally. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Here we are at long last. Yeah, welcome to Stormy Weather. Thank you. Just, if you don't mind a little personal history, I don't know how, how secretive you like to be about this, but mm-hmm. I, was cu- I was curious about when you first started investigating these matters and what it was that, that drew you to them. I think it uh, all started with UFO sighting I had back in the uh, late 70s under the influence of psychedelic, a very paradigm-shattering type of experience. This was in the uh, late 70s and really how the whole thing unfolded. Uh, Myself and a friend of mine in a small, relatively uh, small central California town uh, under the influence of said drugs went for a walk uh, one night to get away from the kind of a crowd and loud, loud scene we were at and uh, made it to a uh, levee, a ditch bank, and before setting foot up on the uh, ditch bank, we uh, joked to ourselves, you know, what if we saw some UFOs right now? In the frame of mind we're in, nobody'd believe us, and we laughed uh, at that somewhat uh, uncontrollably. And uh, it wasn't more than five minutes or so later that we saw our first quote-unquote UFO, whatever the heck that might have been. And during the course of about 45 minutes to an hour, we saw in the vicinity of eight UFOs, and that's UFOs with quotation marks on them because they were all different. Some were the classical-shaped UFOs, you know, the uh, saucer-shaped and the saucer-shaped, but then other ones were almost playful, comical, cartoonish, uh, one with a multicolored propeller, uh, very uh, seminal experience, one that set me on the uh, course I am today because it made me question everything. And what, what was unique about the experience, the friend I saw it with, we saw all the same uh, things, you know, we described them to each other, and I suppose we could, could have been... Uh, telepathically uh, sending these images into each other's minds. I don't know. You know, and I've entertained a lot of different theories over the years, what it could have been, you know, possible MK Ultra stuff going on and other things. But the explanation that seems the most plausible at this point in my life is that we had unwittingly set a uh, magic ritual in motion. In recent years, I've delivered a lecture at Roswell the uh, big UFO festival there and a few other places, most recently at a Fortean conference in Los Angeles. And the title of this lecture is Were the Early UFO Contactees Ritual Magicians? And I started looking deeply into the uh, history of UFOs and UFO sightings uh, going back to the late 50s and even further, you know, to uh, the things Aleister Crowley uh, conjured. And I'm kind of leaning towards the opinion that uh, magic ritual is deeply associated with the UFO phenomenon. So when you actually had this UFO experience then, what was your awareness of the phenomenon or of any of these phenomena of occult or of ufology? Were you pretty much unaware of these fields? Well, no, I was was into that whole scene. Uh, You know, this this was the uh, late 70s, so... You know, prior to this experience, we had myself, the friend I had it with, and a lot of my other friends, we had a yearning to uh, have an experience with the other extraterrestrials, you know, whatever. You know, this was the era when you had movies like Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and that was, that was out there to have that experience. And, you know, as far as occult stuff, uh, you know, I, I read different books. I, uh, at one point, uh, started getting interested, and this is my late teens, early 20s, into astral projection. And so I read a uh, number of books on it, and once, once again, I had a yearning to astral project to 
go into those astral realms and travel other places. And sure enough, once again, maybe this wasn't as unwitting a ritual, but before too long, I actually started astral projecting. And over the course of time, these experiences got more and more spooky, and I felt I had tapped into actually some demonic realm and that one point I just stepped back and said I got to uh, got to get away from this and uh, you know that basically stopped I didn't have any astral projection experiences after that so yeah I think this is all deeply rooted into you know what they call the magician's intent I've never been a witting sorcerer a lot of this stuff has come about unwittingly and the question might arise too have I ever been abducted by aliens and I have no conscious memory of that but uh, there was one very realistic dream I had you know during the same period this is oh it might have been after I had the actual UFO experience I was in my uh, backyard it was a uh, summer sleeping that night on a chaise lounge out in my uh, backyard kind of I was looking I guess it would be towards the east all of a sudden I was in this dream but everything was the same you know my backyard the chaise lounge the blanket the direction i was facing exactly the same not one thing out of place and so as i'm in this dream reclining in the chaise lounge looking off to the east all of a sudden here comes this huge ufo rising above me like something out of uh, close encounters gradually descending uh, toward me almost a huge mothership type of uh, thing and as i'm looking at this I felt a tap on my shoulder, and I jerked to the right, and that woke me up <laughs> in the exact same place and position I was in reality and in the dream. So I wonder sometimes about all these experiences, if perhaps, you know, and I, I don't even know if I necessarily believe in a lot of the uh, alien contactee stories as being true extraterrestrials, but Perhaps I've been contacted by uh, something that kind of led me along on this path. You know, also with, uh, with all this, you know, you talked about the occult and the ufological stuff. You mentioned the uh, parapolitical and all, and as all of this was kind of going on in my life, probably in the, uh, oh, I was in my early uh, 20s. I was on a college campus one day, uh, JC here in uh, Central California, and I saw a sign on... Uh, Posted up on college campus billboard said, "Did the CIA kill JFK?" It had never entered into my reality before that <laughs> that was a possibility. And I go, "Oh, that's kind of a mind blower." And so that got me go looking into the uh, JFK assassination, you know, which is really the mother of uh, father, whatever of all conspiracy.